Hey guys, I'm Nina and in this video I will be talking about shading. We need shading to create the illusion of form and depth. And to be able to shade, you need to understand certain things about shading, such as the light source, values, shading and blending techniques, and of course the right pencil grades and pressure control. This video is a little bit more technical than my previous ones, but it will be worth your patience. So, like this video right now, subscribe if you're new, and let's start! I usually begin with showing the materials I'm gonna use in the tutorial, but right now I'm going to show you a set of pencils I usually use. This one is not a full set, simply because you don't have to have a whole range from 9H to 9B. The range you need depends on the type of drawings you do. I mostly do portraits, and this set is more than enough for me. So, what pencils do you need to shade? Well, first of all, let's figure out what these little letters mean. H stands for hard, F for fine, HB for hard black, B for black. H pencils have more clay and will make a lighter, finer line and will be less smudgy than a dark pencil. B pencils have more graphite and will make a bolder, darker line and also be smudgier than a light pencil. I'm pretty sure most of you knew it. You can see the differences between these pencils yourself on your screen right now. The harder I press down on my pencil, the darker the strokes will be. Some people place a heavy amount of pressure on the pencil naturally. For this artist, a 4B pencil, for example, may be the darkest pencil that is required. For those that naturally produce lighter marks, will definitely need darker pencils such as 6B or 8B. So, you can see that a lot depends on your pressure control. In my case, 4B can easily replace the 8B pencil, because I usually press down harder. But the 8B can also replace the 4B pencil if I don't press hard on it. It will be a good thing to practice and experiment with the pressure in your sketchbook like I'm doing it right now. I'm filling the squares from left to right, starting with the darkest value I can possibly make, and moving towards the lightest using only one pencil. This perfectly proves my point that you don't have to have a full range of pencils. But I'm not saying having only one pencil is enough. If your tool belt currently consists of a single HB pencil, your portraits are probably lacking depth. HB pencil won't let you shade darker areas, even if you press hard down on a pencil. Not to mention, it will be impossible to erase. For the drawing on the left, I used a single HB pencil. And for the drawing on the right, I used 2H, 2B, 4B, 5B, and a black pencil. 
I use black pencils instead of these soft graphite pencils because they're not as black as I want. Using multiple pencil grades makes the job easy because there is less effort required to achieve a lighter or darker shade. For example, it would have been difficult to shade the hair and the shadow under the chin using an H pencil and even more difficult to shade highlights using a 7B. I'm not going to show you how I finished this drawing by adding all the shadows, but you can see some parts of it um, using different pencils such as 2B, 5B, 4B to add more depth and shadows and values. And while you're looking at this, I'll show you my Instagram. I hope you are my follower there and if you're not, go check it out right now and make sure to follow me there to see more drawing tips and cool art materials I share there. I'm going to be honest here, I check what other bloggers write and talk about this subject and most of it is boring. It's too much of the information and most of it is unneeded, such as, I even wrote it down, intuitive space, occlusion shadow, areas of a form, umbra, penumbra and antumbra. It sounds like a spell. <laughs> I'll tell you the most important things, according to my personal opinion, of course, and if you have any questions, just ask them in the comment section and I will gladly answer them. Light and shadows visually define objects. Before you can draw the light and shadows, you see, you need to train your eyes to see like an artist. A full range of values is the basic ingredient for shading. When you can draw lots of different values, you can begin to add shading and therefore depth to your drawings. On the drawings I'm showing you right now, you can clearly see the site where the light is coming from. Here is the Danish actor Roland Müller and the light is coming from the left side. And this is the drawing of Ariana Grande, the one who follow me on Instagram already know this drawing. And Ariana is facing the light source. And the last but not least is the sketch of my husband. You can clearly see that the light is coming from the right side. Value is the term used to describe light, gray and dark tones. The lightest values are called highlights, the darkest ones are in the shadow. You already know that to achieve a full range of values you need a full range of pencils. Or, as we figured out, a few different ones. And now, what do you need to know about the light? Light always travels in a straight line. When the source of light is blocked by an object, it casts a shadow. The length and shape of the cast shadow depends on the placement of the light source. You can see it on the little drawing I'm doing it right now. Most of the time at home, for example, you don't have one single light source. There are multiple lights coming from above, window lights and maybe lights from your laptop. All this might be confusing in the beginning, but try to observe your room and find those light sources. If you are drawing from a reference picture, observe that picture as well. Try to find out where the light is coming from, point out the highlights and shadows. All these little advices can make a big difference in the long run.
These five circles will represent five different shading techniques. And the first one is hatching. Hatching is a row of lines all facing the same direction, more dense and concentrated in the areas that appear darker. I use hatching in my sketches and if I draw beard. Cross hatching. Similar to hatching except with additional crisscrossing lines. I use cross hatching and hatching in my sketches and sometimes in realistic drawings. And cross hatching technique is good for drawing fabrics. Contour hatching. Contour hatching is following the contour or curve or outline of the object. In this case, hatching is rounded to match the shape of the circle. Contour lines can be drawn vertically, horizontally, and even diagonally. This is a great shading technique to practice giving form to your drawings. With a sharp pencil tip, it's great for shading fine wrinkles. Stippling. Stippling is placing many, many dots to indicate shading. I personally don't use this technique at all, but I still included it into my tutorial just to show you guys that it exists and maybe, maybe you will use it. And the last technique I'm going to talk about is smudging. Smudging is using a blending tool after hatching, such as a brush or a blending stump to create smooth shading, but you have to keep your strokes tight. I use this technique for most of my drawings, as you can see right now on your screen. And this is the end of my tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching this. And of course, there is a lot more to say about every subject, but I included what I thought is the most important. I hope you guys appreciate that I'm sharing my knowledge with you. So like my channel, subscribe to support me and my channel to motivate me to produce more cool videos for you. Thank you for watching and bye.